patients elect to continue the pregnancy with gastroschisis specifically because it's probably the most amenable anomaly to repair. And unfortunately, it's not something we repair in utero, but it's something that is addressed immediately postnatally. What is important with gastroschisis is that a diagnosis is made at an excellent center and then you're carefully followed throughout the rest of the pregnancy. And the reason for that is, for some reason that we're not clear on, babies with gastroschisis tend to be at a higher risk for growing smaller than their potential, which we call growth restriction. And another thing they tend to do is decrease their amniotic fluid. We don't know why they do this, but it poses a management dilemma toward the end of the pregnancy, and we want to be very careful about when the right time to deliver this baby would be. It's sort of a balance between making sure your baby's delivered late enough so that surgery is well tolerated by the baby, balanced against not delivering too soon and not delivering for the reasons that are not necessary. So um, the pregnancy is mostly ultrasound and we watch the bowel very carefully, make sure the bowel looks healthy, and usually patients get delivered a little bit early around the 37, 38 week range just to make sure that nothing happens when you're so close to the end. After your initial diagnosis and confirmation of the diagnosis, you do meet with a pediatric surgeon make sure that you're comfortable and understand all of what's going to happen once the baby is born and you can plan well for that. For the remainder of the pregnancy, once that diagnosis is made, generally we watch the baby about every four weeks or so to make sure the baby's growing well and that the amniotic fluid is looking good. If there's any question about the size of the baby, we will step up that ultrasound to a more frequent interval. Same for the fluid. Besides the ultrasound, another very important thing that needs to happen is that the um, uh, baby has a test called a non-stress test, sometimes just abbreviated as NST, and we do that once you're about 32 weeks. This is a way to make sure that on a week-to-week -week basis, the baby's doing great. It provides terrific reassurance both for you as well as for the, the team taking care of you. So about once a week you have this NST just involves laying on a stretcher and having a belt around the belly that lets us listen to the baby's heart rate. It's very relaxing and uh, beyond this and the ultrasound it's just a waiting game. Here's the deal with uh, a fetus with gastroschisis. You know most of these kids do great after birth. The only exception is those who have significant bowel damage before birth. So the only issue about intervention for gastroschisis before birth is whether you, there's something we could do to prevent ongoing bowel damage. The bowel is presumably damaged by being outside the abdomen and floating in the amniotic fluid. And the damage could either be from the amniotic fluid itself on the bowel or from coming through a small hole in the belly and, and not getting enough uh, blood or draining enough blood. So the only issue about intervention for gastroschisis, which is interesting but unproven, is whether uh, doing something like exchanging the amniotic fluid periodically, essentially washing it <laughs> of components that would injure the bowel, would be helpful. Um, uh, or if you had a very tight hole in the abdominal wall, would it help to actually make it a little bit bigger? Amniotic fluid exchanges. Essentially put a needle in, uh, take out some amniotic fluid, put in some fresh, clean stuff, uh, and then do that periodically uh, in, in the hopes that you would clean up the amniotic fluid and save damage to the bowel. The, uh, it's an interesting thing um, and unproven.